Cessna over the threshold, coming up on the white dot, Adderby on the white dot, left turn first available. I got a high wind coming up on about a half mile final, clear to land Adderby on. Traffic on the left face, you're following the Cessna down, low off your left. Square it up just a little bit, and then we're going to get you in. Start your descent, though. Start your descent on the base. Traffic on final, give me follow on base. Base traffic, start turning toward the numbers now. High wing coming up on quarter mile final, take it all the way down to the green. Cessna taxiing on the green, expedite down to the next hard surface. Get me some speed, there you go, 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 go fast. This is going to be good. I got traffic on a mile final. You're following traffic ahead and to your right. High wing coming up on the threshold. Take it all the way down to the green dot. Bob Charlie Sierra, two mile final. A mile final. Turn north. Turn north, and we're going to just make you. Uh, we're going to bring you back around. Jet traffic's coming up on about a mile and a half final runway. Niner clear to land. Okay. All right. Let's 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 listen up, guys. If you're on final for runway nine, I want you to offset to the left. I got a jet that's landing on runway nine. The jet's cleared to land runway nine. If you can make it. If not. Just continue straight ahead. It looks like you're going around for the jet. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, we had one right in front of us, sir. Dragger. Let's see. What we got? A tricycle. Tricycle. Put it down. Tricycle. Put it down. Tricycle. Put it down. Tail dragger. Down to the green. Uh, green dot. Then a left turn. Short final here. You click land on nine. All the way to the white dot. Go down to the white dot. Find somebody to follow out here. Canard, just come to the runway, and I might have to just send you around. That'll be fine. And for the jet, you just want to stay in this pattern, or you want to go back out for an instrument approach? Stay in a pattern. Charlie here. All right, just stay with me here for a minute. And my tail dragger, and eh, let's see, over the numbers, go down to the green. Come on. And Canard's gonna have to go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. And my uh, high wing here over the runway, keep it airborne, keep it airborne. You do not descend, do not descend. You got a fast guy behind you, do not descend. My, yeah, here you go, keep it airborne, keep it airborne. As soon as the guy behind you gets uh, slowed down, I'm gonna put you down, so keep it airborne. The uh, one that just passed the white dot, make a left turn on the hard surface. All right, my uh, high wing tail dragger, you can put it down now. You can put it down now. And Charlie Sierra, let me get you about a mile off. Let's see, Charlie Sierra, I lost. There you are. Make a left hand turn. I'll try to resequence you here on the down ones. We'll see how it looks. Short final, you're clear to land runway nine on the white dot. Clear to land on the white dot. There you go. And the tricycle left on the hard surface and follow the flagman. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being part of the show. And let's see, just find somebody to follow out there, uh, follow on the final, and as you get close to the runway, if it's not going to work, we're going to send you around and then try to re-sequence you. Now, who else got sent around that's not back on the downwind? The Canard? Yeah, Canard. All right, Canard, there's a golf stream up there that went around, too. I just lost sight of him, but you're going to make kind of a left-hand turn and stay low. I think Charlie's here once you're out, too. 3,200. Okay, that'll be fine. Just maintain VFR. I don't know what else is up there above you. Probably most everybody's down here. So just make a left-hand turn. We'll try to get, uh, try to get you back here. Uh, Canard's got the uh, jet inside. Okay, the RV, maybe an RV-10, whatever, here on final. Keep your speed up and go all the way down to the... Uh, aim for the green dot for me. Uh, actually, keep your speed up. There's a guy behind you. Aim for the green dot. I'm sure that's plenty of room for you to land on runway 9. You're going to land on runway 9. Number two... You're going to go down to the white dot. Follow the white dot. Actually, you know what? That's 1,500 feet. You're going to land at the white dot. The uh, spacing looks adequate here. Two guys on final. You're kind of tight there. Keep each other in sight. And you're going to uh, aim for the white dot. If it's not going to work, we'll do. Uh, we'll come up with a plan B. We might have to send you around. The second guy behind you out there in about a two-mile final. Are you slow enough to be able to follow that guy in front of you? You need to go around. Yeah, well, I probably shouldn't ask that because I had about five guys to answer me. So I should know better than that after 35 years, you would think, right? All right, so uh, let me see. The guy who's number one, it's number one. What kind of airplane is he? RV. An RV type. All right, RV type. Keep it airborne for me. Keep it airborne. And I got a fast guy behind you. The number two guy over the uh, uh, trees there. Go ahead and put it down on the numbers. Put it down on the numbers. My first guy just coming up on the numbers. At the, uh, over the grass at the numbers. I want you to keep T minus one minute and counting. Hello. Deutschland. 
<laughs> Hello. He's been, he's been practicing that. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Ed's hotel room. Yes. Ed has got the best internet in the entire hotel. So I am, here we are in Germany. I am pleased to say, Dan Smith, it says live from, it, live from Ed's hotel room. Is this kind of thing part of the standard subscription or do we pay extra? Extra. No, this is all, no, this is all part of the standard subscription. For one night only. Yeah. For one night <laughs> only, yes. So, hello and welcome. Uh, it's been a bloody amazing couple of days at Aero. We've had a fantastic time so far. We're all completely wiped out. We're working from six in the morning till at least... I don't know, eight in the morning. Um, no, we're working bloody hard. Um, and it's been a fantastic show so far. However, uh, a couple of things which we'll address in a minute. But for now, we have to thank Sky Demon for supporting the live stream. And we have to thank Continental Aerospace Technologies for supporting our news and output from uh, Friedrichshaven. And so here is your Sky Demon tip for the week from Mr. Rob Hart, who's appearing live on the Sky Demon stand. So if you're here, go and check him out tomorrow. Hi, I'm Rob from Skydemon, and here's another top tip. Today, we will look at how Skydemon can help you perform weight and balance calculations. With a route on screen, open the Flight Details menu and tap on Weight. Here, you can see the various loading points set up for your aircraft and can enter the actual weights which will be on board for this flight. Let's say that the pilot weighs 90 kilos and is taking 20 kilos of baggage. As we make those changes, you can see the black cross marker for the center of gravity moving within the loading envelope below. You can even see the bar indicating where the center of gravity will move based on the variable quantity of fuel in the tanks. For more information, check out our website or our user manual from within the app. Well, Hello. Oh, there we go. Not quite sure what happened there. And I hope you enjoyed that tip. But let us know in the comments if you use Sky Demon's weight and balance feature. I have to say, probably one of the features I don't use. I, um, I have I have used it, but I feel that I may have put the wrong numbers in because quite often Sky Demon says, do not fly. <laughs> <laughs> so I may need to look into that. Do you use no, it? No, I don't. I've got another separate app. So maybe I should go and visit the stand tomorrow. Maybe you should. Yeah, I'll find out. Yeah. I don't use it because I fly a 182, which means if you can close the doors, you can take off. <laughs> Rich Kennedy yes. says, don't we always say that the pilot is 90 kilograms regardless of the truth? <laughs> speak, for, speak for yourself, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, there you go. So uh, the, the Sky Demon stand has been heaving uh, throughout the whole of Friedrich's I'm trying to get in touch with them to get a little bit of video of them saying hello or something. And they're just like up to the next in customers. So that's a, a good thing for Sky Demon. And apparently people like the tips, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, right. What have we got next? So, ah, yes. Time for some Simon Keeling weather. He's not joining us. You won't be surprised to hear tonight, uh, particularly in Ed's hotel room. Um, so we sent a video earlier. Here you go. Well, good evening, everybody. Hope things are going well for you. We've got high pressure in control as we get uh, into the first stage of this weekend, but change is taking place as the weekend progresses. I think the message I'm going to give you now is make the most of what we're going to have over the next 24 to 36 hours because uh, things are going to be changing. This is the forecast chart for Friday. High pressure is centred off the east of England on Friday. This feeds in this east to north easterly flow. Now, it brings plenty of fair conditions. There may just be one or two showers, central Scotland, central parts of northern England, central parts of England through the Midlands and into southern England. Further west, best of the sunshine, the highest base is here. But some cloud and outbreaks of rain getting into the far west of Ireland. I think for most of us, it's VFR. Base is probably about 4,000 feet and the tops at about 7,000 feet, but always the risk of a little bit of cloud just drifting onto these eastern coasts. Now, for Saturday, high pressure again is in control on Saturday, centred over the south of the country. Um, I think generally fair for many of us, flyable as well. Maybe some morning mist and fog patches around first thing, but they will lift and clear. And then bases around 3,000 feet, the tops at about 6,000 feet. However, low pressure out towards the west brings rain and cloud into the west of Scotland and into much of Ireland. And that means that we go into non-VFR weather, one 
1,000 foot bases, tops about 10,000 feet and reduced visibility as well. Now during the afternoon that rain and cloud creeps its way slowly eastwards and southwards and sets us up for Sunday being a more unsettled day. You see these fronts moving their way eastwards and southwards uncertainty over exactly where they're going to be but at the moment i'm going to say for much of ireland for much of western england for much of the midlands for wales for parts of northwest england this sort of area is non-vfr possibly marginal at absolute best bases typically about a thousand to two thousand feet reduced visibility generally misty and murky tops between about seven and 12,000 feet, some embedded tops in there as well. But elsewhere, it does look as if it is generally going to be um, flyable just about, but always with plenty of cloud. Best of the conditions, I think, for northern parts of Scotland. So you see what I mean about making the most of it during the early stages of this weekend. And that's the way the forecast actually has panned out over the last week. We've seen these signs of things changing later on in the weekend. And uh, those of you who've been to Aviation Weather School will already be able to spot um, those changes as they came through. We'll have booked your aircraft ready to go, no doubt, on Friday and Saturday. Now, if you've not been to Aviation Weather School yet, this is your chance. I've got my next live online course. It's presented it live online by me on the Saturday mornings of the 14th and 21st of May between 0930 and 1230 hours. For more information, get a weather school school.co.uk and you can book your place there now It'd be super to see you there i'll build your confidence in understanding the weather and being able to forecast it yourself trusting those forecasts from official sources and knowing that if you decide to make a trip you're actually going to be getting there without having to turn around because the weather has turned against what the forecast said and i'll show you how you can spot those weather windows up to five days in advance it'll be super to see you there okay i will leave you with that for now whatever you're doing have a fantastic weekend enjoy yourselves well won't you gang uh, out there at the show uh, and I'll be back next week. Thanks again for watching. Keep the sun shining and bye for now. Thank you very much, Simon. And I would just like to say on behalf of the Flyer legal team, um, the legal team is very happy that the microphones were muted during that particular <laughs> session. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, some good feedback uh, on the weight and balance thing. Uh, maybe I'll have a word with Tim and we'll get all, get, a, get a kind of like a longer tip about how to set up your weight and balance uh, properly. It's not going to fit into like a one minute tip here. So maybe we'll even do a Sky Demon weight and balance special. You that never know. Yeah, it would be good. Yeah. yeah. How interesting are we? Let's, oh, do, yeah. let's do a video on weight and balance. Just get a 182. That's my tip. If it's it much fits, easier. It flies. It, that's true. Yep. If it fits, it flies. We've got a local viewer. A local, a local viewer, viewer. Russ Stein from Tiffany Steakhouse in Friedrichshafen. Hello, oh, Russ. Wow. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Hoping you're doing well. Um, so, a uh, bit of a different one this week because we have been, I know I'm not expecting any sympathy, but we've been super busy at the show. So, we didn't have our normal live stream planning meeting and the news is dominated by the show. We do, however, have some other news, I believe. We have the, what news have we got, Dave? Well, the news is, well, the big news is, is that Britain's, Sherwood E Cup has made its first flight. Hey, Absolutely. There it is. There's a picture. We, we have a little picture issue at the moment, but don't worry about it. It's just, it's a German thing. Okay. They just have different sized pictures over here. It's like euros and pounds. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So the E Cup made its first flight. Was that from Cranfield? Or? It was from Cranfield and it was flown by a Cranfield test pilot, uh, Guy Gretman, who actually wrote most of the report that's in, on the Fly, Flyer website. Was it? Was it Cranfield? Because that tower looks a bit short. Uh, <laughs> that looks like Little Stalking to me. Okay, it was it was somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We yeah. haven't just condemned Cranfield's quality of control tower. No. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. So they might aspire to that quality. Yeah. They probably don't have a control tower because they're pretty it's, crap at having traffic, it, aren't they? It's e-conditioned, so I would guess it's a little stalking. Yes, mm. but it doesn't actually say in the report. So uh, that's an error. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Who, anyway, what, why, where, when? Anyway, yes. Britain's electric, uh, uh, a Britain, British electric project flies, and that's great stuff. Yep, absolutely. Well, well, snoring, Ed. snoring. Ah, okay. You'll be correct in the comments. Ah, good. Thank you. I knew Three people. I, I knew my, I knew something was lit. <laughs> Okay, I think it's probably time that we address the sound issue. We've had a few people send us through some kind of interesting comments uh, following the live stream extra that we did from the top of the Cirrus stand in the middle of the show yesterday. A um, couple of things. One, the only bandwidth we could get was a weak 4G signal. Two, on the Cirrus stand, they have all that 
booming music that was going on. Three, there's a whole load of background sound going on. And four, the only microphone we have is the one built into the MacBook. So um, that's the best we can get. Someone suggested that we need a sound technician. You're absolutely right. We do need a sound technician. The problem is with only approximately one in 20, no, one in 50 of the viewers stroke uh, forum members and stuff like that actually being members of the club, Getting a sound technician and bringing a sound technician to Germany is a bit of a luxury that we can't afford. So, mm. frankly, if you'd like to see a sound technician, you know what to do. Join the Flyer Club. Join the Flyer Club and help sponsor a sound technician. Otherwise, yeah. we're working hard. Yeah. You know it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but basically, it was the best we could do. And then we had a few comments about the background music we had. Um, people going, it sounds like porn star music. Well, I, does anyone know what porn star music sounds like? I don't, I don't no know. Idea. No, 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 we don't know. We don't know, um, we, but, we don't know what, what you're watching, but... We, we basically put it there in order to sort of muffle a bit the background sound for the exhibition. So sorry about that. We'll try harder tomorrow. We'll try even harder next year. So there you go. Right. What, what more news stories have we got then? Well, the British Women's Pilots Association, the BWPA, has launched its 2022 aviation scholarships. There's a whole raft of them and uh, they're supported by a whole bunch of you know, training industry uh, people as well. People like uh, Easy PPR, Sky Demon. Uh, Cats, Bristol Ground School, Wings Alliance, Heli Centre, and a whole, so there's a whole lot of uh, things available. They're, the scholarships are to support women to, uh, to to go flying, which is, causes a bit of angst among some circles. But yeah, that's the way it is. And uh, but basically, the idea is to try and increase the percentage of women who are in the professional pilot sector. There's a there's a link in the comments to the news story if you're interested in applying. Yeah, 23 mm. aviation scholarships altogether. Yeah, 20. That's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in other news, we kind of we got a little message and we were like doing a bit of research. We don't know the facts on this, so, but, but but like professional journalists, we're <laughs> just going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> we won't let the facts get in the way of anything. <laughs> so apparently, YouTuber. YouTuber Trent Palmer's had his license pulled right. by the FAA, apparently. Um, we, we still don't know why exactly. We've been trying to figure it out. But if you know, let us know in the comments. That's it. Um, okay. yeah. Dave, I said, Dave's nervousness indicates <laughs> to me that you should stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can say that he, he is releasing a video about it. You can watch it now if you're one of his Patreons. Patreon. But we yeah. will all get to see it in a day or two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Talking of legal things... What about a plane swap? Who saw the plane swap thing? The Red Bull plane Red swap. Bull yeah. plane swap. Yeah. The <laughs> half a plane swap. One plane got swapped to the other plane got swatted, basically. 50% yes. yeah. success. 50%, yeah. you know, glass half full. But hey, who's Cessna ever Cessna half crushed? Who's who's ever seen a Cessna perform an inverted flat spin? <laughs> it's, it's true, actually. It's true. Pretty impressive. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, I guess we we're wondering whether the skydivers are going to get their licenses pulled on the same basis that. Trevor Jacob got his license pulled, and then who knows whether Trump, uh, Trump Palmer must be a completely different thing. We're not going to go there because Dave gets nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, we, factually, we know they applied for um, permission. Uh, permission. Permission. Of, yeah, exemption. Exemption, exemption, exemption from, from the rule that you need a pilot in the pilot seat. Yes, and it, it was a rule that they, they were arguing was turning it from an aircraft into... Into a, a free falling object, object, yeah. Like yeah. yeah, which it was, yeah, a free falling object with wings, so. <laughs> with wings. Yeah. it wasn't, yeah. yeah, okay. So it was potentially an aircraft if someone was in it, <laughs> it wasn't an aircraft if someone wasn't in it. Um, if 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 you're feeling um aggrieved or or offended, if you're about to write the angry of Tom Bridgewell's letter, then uh, go go watch the Av web video from Paul Bertarelli. Good, good little video from mm. Paul, but. Just as what you'd expect from Paul, really. Yeah. Borderless Aviation says Trent is having a premiere video a video premiere tonight at one regarding his license. At Let's one have a watch party. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs to sleep? <laughs> we'll be sleeping at one. Yeah. Another early start in the morning. Um, yeah, okay. Well, let us know. Send us an email. Um, right, what, other, what else have we got in terms of news? Have we got any more news no, other than Friedrich Sarvan? No, it's all Friedrich Sarvan apart from that. All Friedrich Sarvan apart from that. So it's going to be a little bit of our production qualities may not be as slick as they normally are. Okay, so how about I'm going to throw some photos up here and we can talk about them. Yeah. So here we go. Elixir. 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 This is a new Rotax 915 powered That's right. Elixir. That's right. They've, uh, they've upped the power by 40%. Yeah, it's gone from 100 horsepower to 141 horsepower. Um, and a Why is that not 41%? That's 41%. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, you're not Johnny. Your maths is better than Johnny. 
So it's not the power. <laughs> By 41%. By 41%. So it's, uh, and this person challenges. I was talking to the guys from Iglex here, and one of the things about it, they, they claim about the aircraft, is that it's spin resistant. Now, if you can imagine with all that extra power and the same, basically the same weight aircraft, you put on a, a, a power on stall, you know, the thing is basically hanging in the sky like this. Yeah. So that's one reason why they've lengthened the wings by about 40 centimeters, put those big wing tips on, and it's a bit of uh, a vertical shake underneath as well. And it's all to try and keep it so it won't go into a spin on a power on stall. So, on popular opinion, uh oh, uh oh, I saw the elixir. It it looks smaller than I remember it for a start, which is which is not a good or a bad thing. It's just a thing. The wing on the particular turbo one there has got a cuff on the edge of it, a bit like the Cirrus has got a cuff on the edge of it. So the the outer parts of it will stall at a different angle of attack, or will be a delayed stall. It's got spin strakes under the tail and it's got fences on the wing and i don't know when you start adding little bits of aerodynamic tweaks here and there and everywhere else that kind of suggests you're pushing it to its limit but maybe it's fantastic i don't know hopefully one day we'll get to fly it and, yeah. we'll, and we'll be able to talk about it yeah. Yeah. we look forward to it so yeah. yeah well actually we will get to fly it. Uh, well we won't get to fly that one so soon but they have we are lined up to fly the regular elixir hopefully next month yeah. i look forward to that yeah yep yeah. excellent do you want to say why do we want to say why the elixir is such a special airplane it's a special airplane because they make them out of boat sails or something well no, they use this one shot technique <laughs> so the wing is one molding the whole wing there's no ribs there's yeah. no wing spar the whole thing is a mod like if you think if you think monocoque chassis yeah. Which was introduced into cars in the early 50s. Mm. Forget the old ladder chassis. This is a you know, monocoque. Yeah. The fuselage is a one shot molding. So you haven't got these really rivets and bits and pieces holding it together. You've just got the wing onto the fuselage, two bits. All the other control surfaces, ailerons, elevators, are all separate, but they're all one shot things as well. Okay. Yeah. So that's a special. That's what's special about the Elixir. Well, well, I look forward to mm. look forward to learning more about it. What else have you got for us, Ed? Uh, well, how about the Bristel B8? So mm. Bristel, famous for making low-wing aeroplanes, brought a high-wing aeroplane to the show. Mm. Yes. Well, I, I, I quite like the look of that. I think yeah. Pretty, yeah. 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 It needs to be a tail dragger. I don't, think, look, it, don't think that's going to happen. No. It would look good as a tail dragger. Though. It would. It would probably fly well. But the only problem is it's not going to go into production any day soon mm. because Bristol is flat out producing its two, its two main aircraft, which is the NG5, been around for a fair while, and also the, what's called, what they call the B23 um, and with the Rotex 915 IS engine. So uh, that, those two aircraft are dominating production. And this year, they think they're going to sell, they're going to deliver 120 aircraft. That's a lot of aeroplanes. That's quite it? impressive, isn't it? It is impressive. Not bad at all. And so, they got their turbine aircraft, which yeah. was just a bit of fun. Just a bit of fun, yeah. I, I have a photo of the turbine here. Yeah, so the, the turbine, they were uh, father and son were telling you that they just built it because they could. Well, they they heard about the, this, this engine, the TurboTech engine, which we'll come on to a bit later. But um, TurboTech engine, is, and they just saw this and thought, we have to do it, we have to try it. Because, as Martin told me, he and his dad, man, are uh, they're, they're, uh, they're aviation enthusiasts. Tinkerers. What? Tinkerers. Mm. Tinkerers. So they, they just thought, how can we make a nice job of this? The problem is that not only are they flat out producing everything else, um, the engine costs 90,000 euros, mm. which is a pretty hefty price to pay. And uh, Martin was saying, it's only going to be a, you know, a, a turbine-powered microlite. It's only going to be approved in a few countries. Mm. Uh, so... It's probably not for them. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, we're, well, we're talking about turbine. Um, how about, uh, obviously, there's the, uh, we haven't got a photo of the JMB VL3 turbine, but this is the turbine in that aeroplane. Yeah. Obviously, um, TurboTech are there, and they've got this this turbine, and uh, they've also got a really clever turbine generator. Yeah. Mm. So the idea of this is that the, the turbine part spins the generator and creates electricity which is then used to drive uh, an electric motor and, be, and behind you can't see me pointing okay <laughs> <laughs> behind that big thing is their revolutionary 
heat transfer part of it, which they're saying is responsible for bringing the fuel consumption down to 19 litres an hour. So we're hoping to stick a video camera in their face tomorrow morning and ask them to explain that. Yep. yep. Um, talking of which, it's probably time that we pause the news and play that video. Or are we going to play that video later? Which video? The video from today video. I think it's we could run it now. I think we, we could run it now. now. Yeah. Let's run it now. It's a, it was a hastily edited video. How kind of like little... It's our Thursday sizzle reel. It's our Thursday <laughs> sizzle reel. And it, it's probably uploaded here somewhere. Where is it? Uh, Thursday sizzle reel. There you go. Are you ready? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Friars coverage of Aero 2022. We're about to head out and uh, bring you all the great stuff from the show. Hi, it's day two of our coverage from Aero Friedrichshafen, uh, brought to you thanks to our friends at Continental Aerospace Technologies. So looking really cool from Alpi is a new twin uh, based on their four-seater, uh, but obviously two engines. It's going to use the Rotax 912, 914 or two Rotax 915 IS engines. Another surprise whilst we've been walking around the halls is this. It's a three-quarter scale replica of the Texan II, and it's actually not powered by a turboprop, even though they've got the exhaust stacks there. It's actually powered by a Rotax. So, looking very cool in the halls is this, uh, you'll know the Bandy. Well, there's now a new version, the MCR Club Sportage with a tailwheel. How fantastic is this? Uh, powered by a range of engines, the 80 horsepower Rotax up to the um, turbo Rotax 914. Cruise speed, max cruise speed is quoted at 156 knots with the turbo. Um, just a beautiful machine and um, comes in under the 600 kg max takeoff weight. So who knows, could we see this in the UK? It's beautiful, I hope so. Shiny. Okay, so Behringer Aero have a new uh, Sense Air kit, which is a tyre pressure monitoring system. Uh, it's just been STC for their PA46, uh, some models of diamond, um, and it's an it's, it bolts onto basically a wheel, um, and you can sense pressure remotely using an app. So, uh, at, it's Ed Hicks at uh, Aero 2022 and we're on the Gogatair stand and uh, learning a bit more about the G750. And joining me is uh, Istok Salaman, who is the guy behind the design. Uh, Istok, Ist thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you too for coming to our booth. Uh, can you tell me uh, a bit about your design? Um, we started to design the airplanes 10 years ago. The prototype, we have just the 10th anniversary when the first proto prototype flew. So uh, in 10 years, we developed the airplane in the stage of serial. Hello, I'm here with Trevor Pegram at Garmin. Trevor's the international sales manager. Uh, many of you will know Trevor well from UK events. Trevor. Um, thanks for joining us today. I see Garmin's got a whole bunch of new stuff here, and amongst them is Autoland. So do you want to talk us through Autoland? Absolutely. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, happy, happy to be here. So this is the first time we've actually had the Autoland on display in Europe. So first time back at Aero Friedrichshafen. You can see we've got lots of other things on display here, but really this is the showcase of what we're presenting um, at Aero Friedrichshafen 2022. Um, the fantastic thing about Autoland is just how easy it is um, to, to use and how... Okay, probably the sexiest looking gyrocopter here at Aero has got to be the new M26 uh, Victor from uh, Magni Auto Gyro, powered by the Rotex 915 IS. It's just a stunner. So remember, like, comment, subscribe. Okay, okay, we need to explain. Um, there are some full-length videos coming for all sorts of things. There's a, Ed's got a full-length video coming for the GT... GT for, the, for the Gogatair GT750, and we've got one the for the Junkers. A whole bunch of stuff. We've got one for the Junkers. We've got one for the Garmin Autoland thing you got there. We've got one for the Garmin GI275. We've got one for Garmin Safe Glide. Smart Glide, Smart oh, Glide. Oh, yeah. We've got one Sorry. from Ivy McIver of Cirrus giving us an update on the piston line. One from Matt Bergwell at Cirrus giving an update on the jets. We've got one from Karen Hong, who's the new boss at Continental. There's still a lot um, of editing. We've got 
uh, there's a ton, ton of editing to do. We just didn't have time to put a thing over there saying full interview, which I spelt wrong on yesterday's thing. Hacken says, <laughs> bring back the dog. We want an interview with the dog. <laughs> really good point. There's so many dogs. There's, there there's are a lot of dogs at the show. They're all characterful. The absolute best dog, though, is there's the a shark. dog on the shark stand, which is this little terrier who wears a little co-pilot um, <laughs> kind of tag. And every so often he'll sit completely he'll sit completely quietly, peacefully on the shark stand until someone walks past and he's like, I have a problem with you. And he'll run up and he'll bark <laughs> and chase them off the stand. That's typical terrier. 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 There, was, there, was, there, was, there was a dog underneath the um, J, whatever it is, turbine earlier. And there was a, there was another dog kind of like walking along in the aisle. And this one went. I quite fancy her <laughs> or him. I don't know. And so I just, just went off. The owner was completely oblivious to the other one going, I'm just going to go. Yeah. But it, <laughs> it, it's a very, very dog friendly show. Yeah. Of of employ the dog. Rich, Richard Kennedy, <laughs> you could do with a video editor to get the sound engineer. <laughs> We're doing our best. We're That's doing true. our best. We have like. <laughs> and we don't have much. We had to rush home tonight and yeah. eat our tea really fast <laughs> to get you your, your live stream. Should we say where the second choice? Uh, location was for the uh, for the live stream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it all depended on where the where the Wi-Fi stream signal was strongest. The second best choice was Ian's bathroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're all pretty glad that we're, we're not in my bathroom. Yeah, so uh, yeah, <clears throat> video editor. When when you've got when you've got about twenty minutes to put that together, that's about as good as you can get with the skill level that I've got anyway. So um, so we either need someone with talent or somebody else. Yes. Um, but anyway, there you go. So that was today's little sizzle reel. Yeah. Well, I must upload that to YouTube. I don't. Actually. I don't. Whisker Alpha Pilot says the dog must not like tail dragger pilots. Well, oh, that, oh, that's true, isn't it? If he's the shark dog, then mm. he's like all nose wheel. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Good point. Good point. Mm. Okay. Just so another picture. Yeah. Hit us. Uh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. So hold on to your. Hands. Oh, sorry. Before you. Before oh. the other picture, did you not say at the end of that video, this must be the sexiest gyrocopter here? I did. Yeah, I so it's look, like look, the word sexy. So like, this is a good reason for me to post this. This is the Magni M26. And yeah, okay, I've reverted to my 19, 19 sort of 89 Jeremy Clarkson car descriptor <laughs> words. It's, <laughs> it's got a tripod at the back holding it up. Otherwise, it'd sit there, wouldn't it? But, Begging look, like... but ignoring the tripod holding it up, there's a lot of auto gyros at, at um, Aero Friedrichshaven. A lot of them, I'm going to say this, sorry, a lot of them are ugly. <laughs> um, this one is a looker. It's really nice, and it's a beautifully crafted product as well. Hands up, everyone who thinks that all of them are ugly. There's, oh, there's a couple I like. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just me? Yeah. Just you, yeah, it's friends. just you, Ian. Yeah. Oh, well. Right. There you go. There we go. Oh, I've gone to the comments. I need to turn my photo off. There you right. go. There go. What else um, have we got then? Oh, this is an interesting one. Dave, tell us about this. Mm. This is the Aero Pro Vision, um, which is a very lovely looking uh, two seat aircraft. Composite. It comes from the same people who do the um, uh, the Eurofox. Um, about ten years ago, they started this project, and it's really a, another, another hobby, really, from one of the guys at uh, AeroPro. They wanted to develop this, and they made this is the second prototype. They've got it all ready. It, it's actually ready to go into manufacture, but they don't want to put it in. They don't want to manufacture. They don't want to put it into production because they're too busy producing Aero Eurofoxes. So they put the whole projects up for sale. They're looking for a buyer, preferably a manufacturer, who could take it, all the jigs, all the intellectual property, all that's there, ready. They've done all the calculations. It's there to be put into production as a 600 kilogram so microwave. I mean, mm. I don't know. I mean, they're, so they, they're they going along. Get, we've got this Eurofox. It's kind of like steel tube and fabric and stuff like that. And, and you can get it as a tail drag or you can get it as a nose wheel aircraft. Let's design... A composite nose wheel aircraft that looks not too dissimilar from the. It's it's, mm, uh, well, it's, it's beautifully it's, finished. Yeah, it looks it yeah, looks yeah. really nice. I, I agree. I'm just I'm just confused a bit about why they would actually go through all of the trouble of designing it, building it, testing it, getting it ready for production. And I go, think, we're going to sell it now. Well, I, uh, mm. I guess actually they're being really successful with just the regular Eurofox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think the thing is that they probably thought. Eurofox was going to go to say, I don't know, 2018, if they're lucky. Yeah. They wanted a follow on project. But the Eurofox is so popular. And, that they're uh, going to sell something to someone else that then competes with the Eurofox. I don't think this competes with the Eurofox. I think it's going to be a more expensive yes. Next level up. Next level up. If you look at the things, the way that the windscreen, the windscreen is 
A, a is a beautiful shape, mm. and it's bonded in. It look, does look lovely. It's, That's a bit like someone going, okay, well, I've got my fish and chips, or I've got my fish fingers here, but I've developed this amazing lobster thermidor recipe, but I just really want to eat my fish fingers. <laughs> who, who wants lobster thermidor? Well, I've got back lobster thermidor. Well, me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. How about another photo? Go on, then. Yes. Hey, look who it is. Hey, yeah. hey. Where's, where's Zara? She's, She's at Friedrichshafen. <laughs> yeah, we bumped into Zara today, or Johnny bumped into Zara. Well, I walked past her and didn't even realise she was there. Then Ed texted me <laughs> saying, have you seen Zara? But I said, no. Yeah. Well, actually, so, there, there had been, um, Johnny had been stalking Zara, and we do have evidence of this yeah. somewhere. Um, just bear with me a moment. I'm not sure you should uh, say that. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost the photo. Oh, no. Good, oh, no. good. No. It's on here somewhere. Right. Keep talking. Right. So this photo lock's not quite that easy, gone? is it? Did you delete it? Oh, no, I've got it. I've got it. Of course I didn't okay. delete it. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, the first day of Aero, there was a cardboard Zara, which even Zara admitted to us. She said, I was surprised. I'm quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've got up every day and didn't realise how short I was. But but absolutely, just I, it's the first time we we've met Zara. Absolutely delightful, mm. a truly brilliant ambassador for GA. Yeah. Um, oh, David, he's got a good question. Weekly question. Weekly question. Where's Mac? Greece? Where's Mac? He's in Greece. Where's Mac? In Greece. Even what even think... Zara said we said to Zara, "Where's Mac?" She went, "He's in Greece." <laughs> so basically, I think Zara is a little bit pissed off about that because she got stuck in. Russia for yeah. more, um, ages with, with like a meter of snow and <laughs> temperatures of minus whatever, and Max stuck in Heraklion in Greece yes. during the summer season. He's probably going. I think. Well, I think he's. It's. It's beginning to sound like he may have arranged to get stuck. Sorry, no, no, no. <laughs> you need which paper? Oh, I've lost that. Oh, I better stay another week till I get a replacement. That's it. <laughs> Uh, how about... I need to change my address with the CEA. I better stay another three months. <laughs> yes. How about another photo? Go yeah, let's go for, uh, I am looking for, uh, mm. there we go. So surprise mm. news. Um, obviously, we knew the aeroplane in the bottom is the Junkers A50 Junior. It's a brilliant recreation of a 1929 design, uh, modern with a Rotex 912 IS. Um, uh, and it's made by Junkers uh, Flugzeug Work, uh, the guys who brought you the recreated uh, Junkers F13. Uh, and this is a 600 kg microlite, absolutely astonishingly beautiful workmanship. Um, but they surprise us all by, if you look above that, you'll see there's a side by side. Um, it's, this is modeled on nothing in particular. They just took Junker, Junker styling in, influences and uh, boss of uh, Junker's uh, Dieter Morshek said, wouldn't it be fun if we made a side by side version of this? Um, so uh, his his guys went, you know, uh, Dieter, this is a great idea. We'll go ahead and do this. So this, uh, some purists will be a bit surprised, but this is going to be nose wheel. It's going to fly next year. It's another Rotax powered airplane. But in a world of lots of white plastic yeah. LSAs, mm -hmm. having some brilliant stuff like this. Yeah. It's just, and I, I, I had to go and check the price to remind myself. The A50 Junior, they're selling for 179,000 euros with that. And I, okay, not a lot of us have that sort of money, but for a brand new aeroplane, that I yeah. it must be costing them way more to do this. Yeah. Mm. Um, this is is purely just it's Dieter Morshek going. I've I've made plenty of money in my time with my suitcase company, yeah. and I just love aviation, and I'm going to put it all back there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Mm. Um, and also, Peter, if you're watching, we have some fantastic <laughs> advertising. <laughs> yes. in flyer. And it's, uh, as if that wasn't enough, yeah. then Dave, tell us about Dieter's Junkers project. Yes, yes. If you have, I mean, if you have, if you've got too much money, what do you do? You, you, you launch a couple of little small aircraft, but then you go really, really for the wallet, wallet emptier. This is a uh, Junkers Ju fifty two, the NG new generation. It's a tri motor, and it's based on a, an historic aircraft. Um, now there was a case of a JU-52 having a bit of an accident a few years ago when the engines gave up. So it's been, they've been told, I have got this from uh, Red Aircraft, um, they've been told that they've got to put more modern engines in. The more modern engine they've chosen is the Red Aircraft V12 turbo diesel, 550 horsepower each one, and there's three of them. So this is going to be quite, quite a pokey aeroplane. Mm. Sixteen hundred and fifty horsepower. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Uh, Darren Lewis is. A, he he saw the cowls and it's gone. Oh, they're they're putting a turbine in it. No, it's it's a big diesel V V eight. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, as Julian Dreadwell says, what about the Ju fifty two reproduction? Fact or joke? No, this is really? definitely this mm -hmm. is absolutely fact. A few people have got, been going, "What? Like you know, this is madness." But I had, had uh, I made an interview with uh, the guy behind the, mm. the technical aspects of this project, and he's like, "No, deadly serious. Um, this is happening, and it's going to be uh, it's a two to three year project before we'll see it." So yeah, look out for that. Look out for that interview. That will be uh, that will be going through our usual low quality editing process. <laughs> uh, actually, Johnny's doing it, so it might be yeah. better um, uh, editing mm. process. So we'll be releasing that video sometime next week, I would guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, how about this? Oh, oh yes, beautiful airplane. This is the um, the MCR Sportage. Oh, it looks brilliant. Um, you'll all be familiar with the Banby, the um, the airplane from Dinero, derived from the uh, Michel Columban design, uh, and then taken forward by uh, Christophe Robin. Um, it's carbon fiber airplane. Um, they went Dinero went bust a while ago, and they've been purchased. Dave knows a bit more about this recent rebirth though and this fantastic aeroplane yeah a guy called eric fumi started a company in uh, started a company called mcr uh, in 2012 his objective was to make spare parts for the dinero uh, mcr range um because of the, all the things like engines and brakes and it just run of the mill but the, the airframe parts were not available because the dinero had gone and he, he, he had some quite good success making these parts so one thing led to another uh, so got a bit of investment, and they started the idea of making complete aircraft developments of the original. And he had all the, the rights. So um, in 2018, they produced uh, their very first MCR that, you know, based on the original Bambi. And they also produced a four-seat version, the MCR4S. Which is powered by the Rotax 915. Powered by Rotax 915. Yeah. Now, I did ask them about, uh, is it going to be a kit or is it going to be manufactured? And it's quite a complicated situation in France where you can buy the kit and you can make it yourself, or you can pay the factory to make it for you. Not the factory. Not the factory. A different company, a different company other company. than the factory. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, but, um, so theoretically, you could have it either as a kit or as a ready made aircraft. But the, the, the fact that the Bambi has <coughs> been an LA approved aeroplane, yeah. I think there's a, I'd like to think there's a really good chance that we could see. This at uh, least Bambi tailwheel aeroplane, yep. Sportage, mm. on the LA fleet in the future as a as a kit, and I just think that's someone said it's like a it's like a composite RV six. It just looks brilliant. Yep. Yeah. It does look. Yep. Talking of talking of something serious but a little bit dull, or well, not dull, but a little bit deep. Um, I was talking to Dominic Rowland from EASA, who was telling me about something called Part Twenty One Light, which is the new regulations they're bringing out concerning ELA one aircraft, so like up to twelve hundred kilos. Um, so basically, is it, not only is it easier certification and some self-declarative stuff, but you can become a design organizer. You can get design organization approval and production organization approval also under self-declarative stuff as well, which is if you get it under self-declarative stuff, it means that you'll only be able to sell something with a restricted type certificate, So, um, which if you're not using it commercially, is absolutely fine. Um, but it does seem that there's a really good future way for people to actually get into building aircraft to get round of that kind of not this company it's a different company yeah kind of thing and all sorts of other things so there is some really good stuff happening i'm hoping to go to a, a seminar tomorrow at 11 to get a bit more information but that is really quite profound really um, yeah. yep. and not super interesting in terms of the detail but i think it will have a, a big effect and it, it's already yeah. it's going through so just, i don't know whether we'll adopt that uh, or not um, let's hope. Let's mm. hope so. And spookily, we saw Roland coming into our hotel restaurant. Yes, we did. Yeah, not to eat with us. But... Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, back to the news. Well, oh. something different. John, this is uh, Johnny's got oh. a bit doolally over there. I this. know, I love it. It's, so, we thought originally it was built by the company that made the uh, Tucano scale Tucano. Yeah. Uh, but it's not. It's built by a company called Squadron Leader Aircraft from Italy. Um, yeah, it's a three-quarter scale Texan II replica with, although they've stuck the PT-6 um, turbine exhaust on it, it is Rotax powered. <laughs> <laughs> think, well, it, it, keep, it keeps with the replica theme. It, it looks but good. That, it's exciting. It That's really cool. Is. It really yeah. is. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Um, it's got... It's got ramp presence. Even it certainly has. Yeah, in the yeah. hall. Of, yeah. in the hall. Not of so much when you shut down. 
But no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, th- th- this is this is a favorite uh, kind. This has been around Aeros in the past, um, but this is a, a, um, a SSDR a carbon airframe Corsair. Originally, it had no folding wings and was powered by a three-cylinder radial um, uh, Werner engine. Uh, there's a new version of it from the designer where it's, he's added folding wings, which is just brilliant. And this one's going to be electric powered. Mm. So um, I don't think we're talking about the Corsair. I think we're talking about the yeah, Texan. Yeah, um, £7.50 per month, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember the um, the, te- the Texan, but no, uh, we'll, we'll go back tomorrow. And yeah, it's got a road tax. I'm going to guess it's going to. I'm going to guess they'll say it'll cruise at 145 knots, and I'm going to guess it'll cruise at 120. That's it. Hold on to your coat hangers. There was this. This, <laughs> this, oops, oops, this is the magic. So um, if there's a tiny bit of silence twister in here, if you look at the canopy and the cockpit. But otherwise, this is the magic. Was it some magic hero? Is it called magic? Hero? Magic, magic one or something. Magic, yeah. Anyway, it's um, it's a multi rotor, multi wing. We're, we're aiming to find out a bit more about it tomorrow. tomorrow. But it takes off vertically, flies regularly like a regular airplane but it's uh, uh, basically the designer uses the tagline even the birds are jealous yes <laughs> and, I, and i think he's talking about turkeys <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm not sure what it, it, it's like oh yeah so magic, just, magic uh, mushrooms yeah this is um i think that'll be that'll be, Smith, the... it'll be talking about the 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 not to cut the um, not turbine um there mm. with his comment yeah, uh, magic mushroom. It's so before you go on to another picture, I just yes. wonder how many more pictures have you got, roughly speaking? Yeah, no, I'm looking because we're approaching the fancy hanger threshold, aren't we? It so is. I'm, 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 I'm going to give us a, I'm going to give us a quick run through of the other things that we've got. So also at the show, uh, Technam's P Mentor. Obviously, don't dwell on the P bit. No. Um, uh, Aquila had uh, were showing their full size, nearly complete A414. That's going to be powered by its four seats, powered by Rotex 915. Uh, gorgeous Waco YMF5, uh, also part of the Junkers um, stable, but uh, made by Waco. Uh, what else have we got? We talked about the Gogatair. That's the beautiful Gogatair G750. It's two plus two with Rotex 915. Did you, did you say they were bringing that to Popham? Um, like, uh, private, private flyer, flyer. private flyer. Yeah. They bring it, which actually, that's a good segue into the private flyer thing. Johnny, tell people about private flyer. You've got a discount if you're a club member, so you can get a discount on the ticket and I think on the landing fee. Yeah, twenty percent well. off the ticket and fifty percent off the landing fee. Yeah, the, and code, the is in code the is on the website in the membership area. So go onto flyer.co.uk, log in, and you'll find the code in there. Yeah, and I, I'm told I bumped into Alex, who's the organizer for Private Flyer, at the show yesterday. He was walking around, he was here only yesterday. He was saying that he thinks um, they have the biggest lineup of static aircraft that they've ever had. And we're talking about not, not people who fly in, but people on stand, mm-hmm. so, so stuff like that. So huge amount of things. So if you want to go and uh, check out Private Flyer, we'll be there yep. for maybe not for all of it, but for part of it, we'll, we'll hopefully would have honed down filming and editing and music skills. We'll look for some, we'll look for a better porn star track. Uh, yeah. For those of you who appreciate the porn star track. That's it. I've, I've got one other news item. So one other thing that we spotted, um, this is intriguing. This is the X Aero 200. Um, so we've all seen lots of different takes on hybrid and electric. This is two V2 uh, petrol engines and an electric motor all on a common shaft. Maximum power output, 260 horsepower, uh, but max continuous of 100 horsepower, 160 horsepower. But the interesting thing about this is it's a hybrid power package that's designed to fit. Um, it's retrofit for regular airplanes like Cessna 172. Um, so, I, and I'm guessing if it's like homing fit, like, like in a Cessna, then it's going to go in other stuff. Like, like other airplanes, yeah, yeah. Um, as, uh, we'll we'll be finding out a tiny bit more about this, but it's at, at the moment they're looking for investors in it. But um, this was just one of the um, really kind of interesting power packages on uh, on offer, and this is the sort of stuff that Aero is famous for. Yep. Yeah. So, quick question there from Richard Kennedy: Where, when is Private Fire? I think it's in two weeks time coming up this weekend and it's at Wickham Air Park yep. okay. mm. so and there's another one later on in the year but no, check it out just google private flyer Wickham yeah. or something obviously yeah. it's a live stream so we can't go by without and someone remarking about uh, the GA there at Duxford 
a whisky alpha pie that says anything will be bigger than the GA day we, at Duxford. We, we didn't was make it, it. Was it small whisky alpha pilot? Yeah, we didn't make that. Um, yes. <laughs> Indeed. 13, 14th of May. 13th, 14th. Brilliant. I think Claire B Thank spotted that as well. 13th, yeah. 14th of May. Good one, Claire B. Thank you very much. Um, there was, wasn't there another story about, I mean, pretty much almost every single aeroplane. No, that's not true, actually. Many, many, many of the aircraft yeah. here are powered by Rotex, are they not? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm. So I think we have another alternative engine. So, uh, so I'm, I'm going to put a photo up on your screen, and you have to tell me what this looks like. <laughs> yep, I, I know you're all going. Well, that Rotax. Looks, that looks like a Rotax, but that is not a Rotax, and I've I I have mislaid the name of this. Chongqing Zongsheng. I'll have one of those yeah. and some and some fried rice, please. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the the. It's, I, I hesitate to say the word. No, I'm not even going to say the word copy. No, but, no. Uh, but it is. It's an it's an aircraft engine from China that. That does does have some similar qualities and appearance to a Rotax. Yes, the yeah. design. Um, you've been trying to find out a bit about it, haven't you? Yes, on the, it was part of a, an engine display uh, from our friends at Fleetwood Magazine, and it's part of their engine display. And there was a stand number uh, attached to it, so I went looking for the stand number. Apart from the fact that the stand number system in British <laughs> is very confusing. Yeah. Anyway. It turned out to be the red aircraft engine stand. And I went and talked to them. There's a chap called Enrico Evers, we know quite well from the past. And Enrico told me that Chongqing in China, China <laughs> is going to be the agent for red aircraft in China. Ah. So, although red aircraft have not really got any intention of bringing the Chongqing Rotex lookalike into, into Europe. They just have, they have put it on that display as a favour. Sure, okay. I'm sure you can buy it in the UK. I think there's a couple of people flying behind them in the UK, I believe. Really? I really? think I've, I think oh. I've seen mention of that on, on Facebook, so it must be true. Yes, okay. that must be true. So it must be true. Interesting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, reverse engineers Rotax, said David Eads. We couldn't possibly comment because we don't, we're not, no. that, we're not engineers I'll, reversing I'll, or otherwise. I'll, I'll throw you up one last aeroplane just for the fact that they gave it a really odd name. This is the Dracula. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, it's a little tiny single single uh, single seat SSDR um, powered by a thirty five horsepower engine or an electric motor, and it's got a folding tail uh, so that you can put it in the hangar in an odd way. So but, um, when Ed says folding tail, what he means is the actual tail boom itself. That it's kind of so you kind of like pull a pin and pull a pin and then fold it back on itself. Yes, which I don't know. I'm sure right. it's perfectly fine. I guess if the pin comes out in flight, it's really good rudder control. <laughs> <laughs> you can only, well, you need. Yeah, well, you one way get, turns only. One way turns only. Yeah. But you need to get the one way turn Correct. right first time. That's yeah. it, yes. Yes. But, yeah. yeah. So, is, is it time for some fancy hang? I, I think reckon. it is yeah. time for some fancy hang. Okay. Hangs. Yes. Let me have a look at. So, so. Hold on to your hats because this is, this is way beyond our normal fancy hanger technical experience. Yeah. We, we, uh, we went around the show today. We filmed some stuff in some. We had some. We had some microphone issues. Yeah. We had some long, some some high show noise issues. Mm. Um, we had some incompetent editing issues. <laughs> yes. But apart so, from that, so all you people who love our video style, at the moment, you're yeah. going to love this. You're going to love this. And yes, we know we need a video editor. We know we need a sound person. We know we need a production engineer. We we need all those things. But you know, feel free to donate them, or if you have the skills. Feel free to come along uh, and help us out. One last comment on the Dracula. Katkin says, I bet the pilots get vamp checked. <laughs> oh, Katkin, that's just... Oh, no. man, that's... Right. Okay, right. who's going first, then? Who wants to go first? Oh, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Dave. Right. Dave. Do I have to send him? Because we do oh, a video. No, we're should gonna, we, should gonna... we do the fancy hanger trailer? I feel yeah. I feel oh, bereft. We, yeah, we I didn't do a special one of those. Well, that's all right. I'll just do the normal one. You can one. do the regular one. Here we go. <laughs> Ed wins. Ed wins. Ed wins. Ed wins. <laughs> no, that's no. not the regular one. No. This is the regular one. Okay. There you yeah. go. Darren Lewington, no, you don't get a £7.50 rebate. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is quality no money can buy. Yeah. 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 We've turned down offers from the BBC, <laughs> CNN, 
everything. So we should say first straight away that Francie Hanger this time was obviously what will we choose from the show? Yes. And it's, there's a hell of a lot of aircraft to choose from. I mean, there's some, you, everything you could possibly want. But I was kind of struck by the Scale Wings SW51 Mustang. It's a 70% size replica, replica. but it, we have a video. It's Let's play the video. video. It, it is. <laughs> I was just about to say, the, the, the hall is full of aircraft that you could possibly want. And a few that you would never want as well. Well, there are a few. Yeah. But anyway. Not fancy hanger. Anyway, Dave's video. So my choice for fancy hangar tonight is this. The Scale Wings SW51 Mustang. It's a 70% scale replica of the real Mustang. And it comes with a Rotax, Rotax 915 IS motor. The only problem with it is that the quick build kit price, it is a kit unfortunately, quick build kit price is $140,000. So by the time you've added a Rotax 915, a prop, avionics, and some leather seats, we're really looking at a quarter of a million dollars. But hey, this is fancy hangar. Very good. There oh, you go. Yeah. Uh, I know I know you all like Ed Wins, but uh, Whiskey Alpha Pie, that I object to Ed Wins. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's very unkind. Uh, okay, should I go next? Go yes. On, go on. Yeah. I'm just going to play the video, basically. My choice for Fantasy Hangar is... No, only joking. Action. Okay, so this is my choice for Fantasy Hangar. It's the MCR Sportage, based on the Bambi. This is the tail dragger version, great for in and out of short strips. Probably takes about 200 meters to get airborne, similar to land. Cruise speed, 140 knots with 100 horsepower. Um, probably going to do four or 500 nautical miles on that. Absolutely fantastic looking aircraft. Just what a, what a fun little airplane this looks like. I wish I could fly it right now. There you That's, go. That is very cool. Yeah, that is very nice. nice. We, sorry, carry on. I, I have to say that I, have, I've, I know what all the choices are, and personally, I think they're all they're all very very good. Mm. When we were, we were poking around this, first of all, we had to kind of politely shoo some people away who were kind of getting in the way of our video. I think oh, it wasn't don't, by don't, don't Didn't they know who we were? I was going to say, don't you don't you use that line? Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but then this guy walked over and he said, "I, I won't do his accent because that would just be insulting to everybody." <laughs> uh, but he basically he turned out to be the guy who'd flown it in from Avignon. Um, who's Danish, living in Germany, but from Avignon, okay. and, it was, it was, and it was a really, really beautiful craft, really flying, so the landing is super easy, so takeoff can be a bit tricky because it's quite short, so a bit coupled and a, a, a bit squirrely, a bit squirrely mm, on the yeah. ground, but once you get airborne, an absolute joy, so that was, that, I reckon that one, that one is my, I reckon that, that I vote for me, <laughs> please. <laughs> Um, Dan, Dan Smith says, not what I was hoping from uh, for Dave. Jane Gifford says, no Luscombe. No, there were no Luscombe. No, no, no. no, I was tempted by the Bristol B8, which is near to the Luscombe. Apart from the fact it's no to <laughs> well, well, Apart from lots of things. My dinner tonight was closer to a Luscombe <laughs> than the Bristol B8. <laughs> Who's next? Who's next? Well, Who's I reckon... Let's, let's do me. Let's, let's do you. Me. Okay, yeah. where are you? There you go. There you go. Okay, so fancy hangar. And for me, there's really only one choice, just because it's beautifully crafted. And it's the Junkers A50 Junior. Um, so it's basically a 1920s design that's been replicated by the master uh, metal workers at Junkers. And it's Rotax powered, a modern Garmin cockpit. And I know you're all going, ah! Oh my god it's terrible but no this is just a brilliant exciting way to make them the old really modern and i just think this is a beautiful product and the a50 is available right now maybe in the future in my fancy hangar i'd probably choose the a60 which is the sweet two seat side by side anyway for now i love the a50 that's my choice and of course if you get fed up with it you could always recycle it as a couple of suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> uh, I hadn't thought of that, really. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. So that just leaves Johnny. Johnny. Yeah, Are you ready for this, Johnny? Well, this is my choice. It's the Black Shape Gabriel. It's an amazing aeroplane. It's powered by an 0320, 160 horsepower. It's got Garmin avionics in here. It feels like a fighter jet. It looks like a fighter jet. And it's just an amazingly well put together, stylish, funky looking machine. Um, I think it would be great to own, great to operate, 
Operating costs are going to be similar to anything else with no 320. You might get a bit more economy, um, but you've got a lot of technology in front of you. And again, we'll get a cockpit shot, but it feels just like you're in some kind of fighter. Cruise speed around 165 knots, so it's going to get you around really quickly. And just sat here, it feels incredible. So this is my choice. I've got to say, I personally, for me, Johnny wins. I, I like the Yonkers, but this, the Black Shake Gabriel is just utterly fantastic. Yeah, and uh, first of all, thank you to Black Shake for actually letting us film inside it. Because they it's, sold they've it. They sold the aeroplane and there was a sign saying no no access allowed. Yeah. Um, but Antonio and the team were very kind of let us in. Um, and I'll show you a picture, just a quick picture of the cockpit. Yeah, and this is it's, it's twin Garmin G3X, isn't it? Front and back. Yeah. And um, obviously, oh, look, it's Ed. Oh, yeah, yes. it's me <laughs> taking a photo. How unusual. Um, but I, I'm, I'm presuming sat in there, this is probably a, this is this is like GA but with a military feel. It, it's incredible, it, it doesn't feel like a GA airplane at all. Uh, did he have a button? Weapons, <laughs> I think you're probably that's an option, right? <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> no, it had, it had written by the side of a cockpit was weapon for the pilot. <laughs> Um, okay, oh, Johnny, Johnny uh, Katkin says, how much, Johnny, for the black shake? Good question. Can't remember off the top of my head. £7.50 a it's, quarter. It's Italian and it's carbon and it's very nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I will find out now. So continue. And continue. I'll, I'll interject. So what else have we got in the comments then? Well, I'm just, I'm just going to do the run through. Um, obviously, uh, oh my God, this may be the best fancy hanger comment ever. Whiskey Alpha Pilot says... Johnny wins. Wow, wow, Marriott. <laughs> uh, Johnny wins. Um, da uh, David Eads has spotted your your aeroplane smelling thing and says, "Does <laughs> oh, yes. it smell yes. good? <laughs> Did it smell it good? Smelled great." <laughs> <laughs> Johnny wins. Um, it was a four way tie, but Johnny wins hand down. Stuart Rue says Johnny wins. Um, uh, uh, Johnny wins by miles. Nice try, Johnny. But Ian wins. Oh, right. Ooh, okay. Oh, uh, oh. Defo, you, Johnny. Yeah. Mark Greenfield. This is an aeroplane that the ultimate high need on. You need to bin some of those um those fireflies yeah. and get some of these black shapes. At least get the guys from Black Shape to bring the Gabriel over for you to try because I think this would look amazing on the ultimate high fleet. Yeah. yeah. So the, the BK 160 TR, which I think this one was. Yeah. Um, I've got a price here for the US. Of seven hundred and thirty-five thousand. Oh, what? That, that, <laughs> seven hundred and thirty-five thousand lira. Yeah, worth every penny. Yeah, worth every penny. That's definitely a penny. Someone... <laughs> oh, that, no. Uh, Cloud Hopper says. Yeah. 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 Cloud Hopper says Ian wins. Crispin says Ian wins. <sighs> Thank you. Um, tie between Johnny and Ed. Okay. Oh. Uh, Johnny wins for me. Johnny sniffer salmon wins. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny wins, Johnny wins, Johnny, Johnny definitely wins. wins. Johnny wins, Johnny wins, Johnny wins. What does it smell like? <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Can't split between Ed and Ian. Uh, Johnny wins twice. Um, Ian has won. No, Ian, ha Ian hasn't won. Johnny has won. Thank you, Peter. Um, Thank you, Peter. Oh, we've had that. How much is that? Not Ed for 700 grand. I'll, I'll take two. <laughs> You're rich, cat kid. Um, Johnny wins. Johnny wins. Oh. Keep it away from Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Mark, Mark Greenfield says, <clears throat> oh, Mark Greenfield says, ultimate and, high needs some until, until I find, find out, out the price. price. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I take it back. Johnny loses at that uh, price. Uh, well, it's That's a fantasy it. hanger, isn't it? Yeah. Is. yeah. And, and frankly, where are Johnny's shoes? <laughs> on this fantasy <laughs> hanger comment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been wearing oh. leather boots for uh, days. <laughs> Um, Johnny wins, but the price. So, um, well, this is fancy hanger, yeah. and sometimes fantasy. Well, it doesn't matter, does it, for fancy? No, but, I think um, one of the best stories, ch changing the subject slightly to price, thinking about expensive aeroplanes, one of the best stories I heard at the show had nothing to do with the show at all. And it was when we were talking, uh, it was around the Cirrus uh, thing that we did. And I'm sure you may have seen this on Twitter. Um, there was yes. there was a there was a serious event and there was a serious jet parked outside. Yeah, uh, somewhere in the US this was very recently last mm -hmm. week maybe the mm -hmm. week before I don't know, 
And uh, one of the people there, nothing to do with Sirius, but one of the people there decided to summon their Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> and they summoned their, is that, if that's what it's called, summon your Tesla. This is where the Tesla drives with drives no one in it. With nobody in it mm. and comes to pick you up because apparently it was raining and they wanted to get in. Yeah. So they're like, oh, so and I'm assuming that someone's getting me. Look at this. This is really cool. I can summon my car. We won't get wet. Yeah. And this car came around the corner. It drives in beautifully steadily drives and very well steadily. controlled. Hits the tail of the Cirrus, which had the brakes on, and mm. despite not seeing the Cirrus, just rotated it through 90 degrees, huh? smashing the windscreen on the Tesla and a whole load of the stuff at the back of the Cirrus. So and there's a moral there. Don't summon, don't your, summon Tesla your Tesla when you're on the ramp of an no. airport. Mm. I mean, if, I would, if I'd have been there, I'd have gone, mate, you touched it, you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I did hear that the guy was in the back of his Tesla phone and they enjoyed oh, it. Yeah. Did you what? Um, <laughs> I've got a bit of a story. <laughs> that was, yeah. Clearly not funny for that chap. But, no, yeah. Johnny, Clive Hopper says, I'm getting anxiety about Johnny's laptop on the edge of that table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, we've got one more day at the show, uh, which is obviously tomorrow. We're yeah. here till just after lunch. So if you're at the show um, or you know anyone at the show, get them to come along and say hello to us. We've got a bunch of interviews, interviews we want to try and get done. We want to get the, the man who makes birds jealous mm. with his kind of weird looking quadcopter aeroplane mm. thing. Yeah. We want to talk to the turbine, turbo mecha people. Turbo so, tech people. Yeah. Turbo tech people. <coughs> we want to have a word. Who else is it we need to talk Four to? Flight. We'll to Four flight. flight. We'll yeah. to Four flight tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna have a quick word with Sky Demon. If we can, if we can prize our way through all the customers, mm. they'll probably be like five thick. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mate, looking forward to that. And, and we have to of... leave by lunchtime. I'm have to leave. Mm. Yeah, maybe after lunchtime because every time that if you've never been to Friedrich's Hub and it's a fantastically well organised show, and there are lots of little restaurants dotted about, and they don't serve the normal dog burgers out of bands that you get at a lot of shows in the UK. They actually serve really nice food. Yeah. Um, if if you like fried meat and potatoes that is yeah. but no it's, it is good food and there's some of them you walk past and you just go oh my god curry burst it just smells amazing mm, so does. i think we need a we, we should probably have a team curry burst tomorrow yeah. shouldn't we before we leave yeah and celebration that's going to be great on the airplane it is <laughs> <laughs> um uh, and in t- talking of shows popham is on saturday it is mm. popham trade fair on saturday and sunday michael like trade fair michael, michael like trade fair, fair. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also it's like a dry run for not the LA Rally. Not the LA yes, Rally. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, there's also the season premiere air show at Shuttleworth. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. That's coming up. The Carrick Moor flying. There's a whole bunch of flying's coming up. The Scurry of Chipmunks flying. Yeah. Um, Organised by our own Catkin, I believe. Yes, po- po- uh, yeah, possibly, probably. Yeah. Um, there's a on the Monday at Popham. There's a. It's a bit, bit of a long title. It's classic car show, ultra era of jumble and a vintage flying. Oh, of course, it's Bank Holiday Monday, isn't it? It is, yes. Is it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Good news, everybody. Oh, my oh, word. Yeah. yeah. Flyer grants you a day off on <laughs> Monday. <laughs> you do need to have to be from a Flyer Club then, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So about 15 months, you get a day off on Monday. And yeah. if you sign up for a year, if you if you become, if you wait till the price goes up to £52, we'll even give you two days off and call it the Queen's Platinum Jubilee or yes. something. <laughs> Um, right, I think that's probably all we've got time for. I don't know about you, but I've quite enjoyed doing it with like four people in the room it's instead been, of four yeah, TV it's screens. Been very yeah. good. It's been great. Yes. Yeah, Dave lives in Plymouth, so it's going to be a bit of a trek for him. <laughs> <It is. laughs> I've, I've got a minor correction to make. I, I, I've attributed the scurry of chipmunks to Catkin, and she said it's nothing to do with me. Right. And Fenland has no really, hundred low lead yes. anyway. Yeah, that's going to be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Well, so Dave, yeah. Dave's going to struggle to drive to the drive to Friedrichshafen every week. For, for, for the, we should book this room every Thursday night. <laughs> but we will. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure we're going to try and do a few more get together um, yeah, uh, yeah. live streams because it's good yeah. to be in. It, it's nice to it, be in one room. It, it, it is good. It is good. And the other the other thing that we need to do is we need to organise some of these get together live streams mm-hmm. at. Um, different locations. So yeah. um, I think I, I got an email from someone the other day, maybe about doing one in Jersey. Yeah. Uh, and then That's we right. should do one yeah. in, where else are we going to do it? Leicester? Leicester. Leicester. Mm-hmm. So uh, kind of combine it with a Leicester curry night or something like the curry verst or okay. something. Yes. That would be a, that, I think that would be a good thing. So let's get that sorted. And, and as, as someone pointed out, I'm actually in sync tonight. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, how can we make that change? Yes. We should have thought of that, shouldn't we? <laughs> we should have recorded some. 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, brilliant. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. It is half past nine in Germany, and we've got to get up early in the morning for yet another morning, at least, at the show, before we earn our currywurst. Mm. Uh, we'll be back. Um, at the moment, I'm still planning to come to Popham Microlight Trade Fair on Saturday. Yeah. Um, and so there you go. And uh, But that's because I've got Monday off. Really. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if, if, I'll, I'll try and make it with you. So um, if you see if you see us at, at uh, Popham, uh, obviously please do come and say hi. Mm. Yeah. Um, We've only got a limited number of t-shirts, so it might be smelly t-shirts yeah. <laughs> by Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> um, I saw Rob Hughes today. Actually, Rob Hughes was walking around, the uh, CEO of the Microlight. Yeah. Uh, VM, yeah. He is. Well, he was. I think he's flying back or something. Um, but anyway, uh, so I look forward to that. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you had a good week. I hope you have a great weekend flying, and we'll see you soon. We fly safe, everyone. Bye. Bye.